The Expendables 4 is a 1.5 star movie. Here's why it sucks. With a stupid actual title of Expendables. The Expendables 3 was underrated even though it was a bit of a step back. However, this one is an unbelievable drop in quality. Easily one of the worst films of the year. And that's as a huge fan and defender of this franchise. You've probably heard about the CGI. In fact, Collider said that it looks like something from a mobile game. And well, that's apt. It's like low detail PS2 cutscene level graphics that are laughable, lazy, and downright insulting to the genre. The green screen is among the worst I've seen in a modern film with a decent budget in some time. On top of all that, it just looks cheap. Where did the $100 million go? How does this have the same budget of John Wick Chapter 4? Is the action at least okay? Meh. Not really. Almost all of it is over edited or framed in too much medium close ups to really get a feel for the choreography. Sure. There's some entertaining portions to the mindless fighting and there's a lot of talent on display, but they're entirely underserved by the mediocre set pieces and direction. I try really hard to look for the good in movies like this, but sometimes it can be difficult. However, if you like that attempt at doing so, you should subscribe and smash that like button and ring the bell for more notifications. My boy Iko Uwe from The Raid, sorry if I mispronounced it, could have been given so much more as the villain. Same with Tony Jaa, but instead they're just largely forgettable and bland additions. And that is not on them even if their talent still shines through some of the shoddy filmmaking. The waste of talent is also magnified by the rest of the casting. Now, Andy Garcia is a decent pick as the CIA guy, and Megan Fox has some action credits to her name, but she doesn't do much of anything in the movie in that kind of role. It honestly just feels like she's there to be eye candy, as she tends to be. 50 Cent is in the movie, and with respect, it's a bad performance. They even go full self-aware, too far into it, and use one of his songs as a distraction in the set piece, and it's beyond dumb. There are some forgettable other people who join the team, along with veterans of the franchise. You can't help but think, why? Why not cast other legends like Pierce Brosnan, who's expressed interest, or Gerard Butler, Liam Neeson, or newcomers like Joe Taslim and Yuyan Ruian from The Raid? How about Keanu Reeves, Dwayne Johnson? There's so many other names that I could name that would fit the bill of the franchise in so many of these roles. Each previous film has upped the ante considerably in this area, and it's such a letdown here. What are all the other wonderful actors they added, like Wesley Snipes? Why didn't he come back? My guess, money, or they read this script, or both. And that script is awful, full of crass jokes that almost never land, and some that are just weak callbacks to the first film. Now, I like a good callback, but here, eh, I do appreciate the camaraderie between Stallone and Statham. It's the most believable relationship in the film and one of the highlights of the series. Most of the humor is incredibly cringe, and some is outright offensive. Sobriety is made into a joke for Dolph Lundgren's character, and it's actively promoting alcoholism by the film's end. Horrible, and a character regression, really. Then, it goes for dark humor, with a bit of a funny ending that comes across as a casual, unjust justifiable murder that does not sit well with who the characters promote to be and their development and the things they stand for. I do appreciate the attempt at focusing more on Jason Statham's Lee Christmas. Reportedly, he was supposed to get a spinoff called Christmas Story, and that seems to be folded into what Expendables 4 started as. There are good ideas here. Dealing with his failures, insecurities, loss, and revenge, and the like, but it's surrounded by such dung that it's hard to hone in on. The actors do what they can with what they have, and I respect that and I commend it, but it just does not come together whatsoever. Plot is predictable, the dialogue is bad, Everything feels like a phone in cash grab, and when the film decides to up the stakes and fire in all cylinders, you might actually catch yourself enjoying the carnage on display. If you can look past every shoddy thing in the presentation that this is. Turning your brain off is a must. Otherwise, I recommend watching the halfway decent fights on YouTube. The few that there are, even if they're over-edited. Now, I'm a sucker for action movies, and I enjoyed the portions where I could, but it's hard to recommend this at all. Likeability of half the cast and their natural talents of being a fan of them in a fun franchise is about all this has going forward. If you want to see Jason save them versus Iko Away, watch that scene on YouTube. It is pretty cool, at least in theory. How the Mighty Have Fallen. It's ironic as a film series about a bunch of washed up mercenaries played by aging action heroes who starred in both iconic and forgettable action films have made the most forgettable, bland, and trashy action movie in an otherwise respectable action franchise. They can't even title it something non-ridiculous. Expend four bulls. Expendables 4. What a terrible trend. Let's just get rid of it. It deserves a better title. The audiences deserve a better movie. And the cast deserves a better franchise send off than this. That's why the Expendables 4 or Expendables is 1.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, always look for the good.